Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Jesse Pino. I'm a front-end engineer at Clue, which is a, um, a period tracking app and female health company based in Berlin. So uh, the inspiration for this talk is a story that a friend told me recently. So he works at uh, a major tech company, which, uses a pro uh, which makes a product that probably most of you use. And he was working on a project recently, and he created a CSS class for a button. And for that button, he set the, p uh, the padding to zero. Um, well, as it turned out, the same CSS class name was being used for a totally unrelated checkbox in a different part of the web app. And because of the way that it was rendered, setting its padding to zero made it completely invisible. Uh, the problem is that this checkbox controlled user subscriptions to the single most frequently sent email from this company. So for like five days, none of the users were able to unsubscribe from like the one thing they probably most wanted to unsubscribe from. Um, so I was asking him, uh, you know, how none of their tests could have caught this. And he said, um, you know, they're using Selenium, which works directly with the DOM API. So, you know, the visibility doesn't really matter. It can check and uncheck and, uh, a checkbox just fine, unlike a human. Um, so I was thinking about this recently because we're currently working on converting all of our CSS to CSS and JS, uh, which is apparently controversial. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're using styled components. And I realized that during this, co this conversion process, I'd probably make like a million of these mistakes myself if I didn't have like um, a good system in place to catch them. And um, so Selenium wouldn't really work. I don't think unit tests would really be applicable here. What I really wanted was a way to visually compare my components before and after the CSS conversion. So this talk is about the three tools that we put together to, uh, to put the system in place to solve this problem. Um, obviously, there's not really time during a lightning talk to go into these in depth but I'll just kind of give you an overview of them um, and give you a link at the end with a blog post that I wrote with a lot more detail. So the first tool is called Storybook. Um, you might have seen a little bit of this from Samantha and Curtis's talk on uh, universal components, but Storybook is what we use basically to develop our, our components in isolation. It's basically a server that runs alongside your front-end app, and you write stories for each of your presentational components, rendering them in different states, like is loaded is true, is loaded is false, has error is true, and so forth. Um, sorry, I checked my notes. Um, yeah, so again, yeah, there's not really enough time during a lightning talk to go into Storybook in detail, but um, if you're not familiar with it, I'd really recommend uh, checking it out. It's really useful. The second tool is an add-on for Storybook called Storybook Chrome Screenshot. So you can configure it with multiple viewport sizes to take screenshots of all of your Storybook stories. Um, it then saves these images to your local disk. So here, I here are a few examples from the helloclue.com web app um, at five different viewport sizes. This is the author page of our website when it's in the loading state. So the third and final tool is called RegSuit. Um, this is a visual regression testing tool. So it takes two directories of images and then runs visual diffs between each image. Um, and then at the end it produces this nicely formatted HTML report of all the results. Um, so this is what that looks like. So you can see the before and the after um, of each screenshot and then a diff with red highlights showing what changed. Um, and you can configure the tolerance for change, by the way. So you can set a tolerance of zero um, if you want it to, to fail if literally a single pixel's opacity has changed or something closer to one uh, if you're okay with you know, minor differences. Um, sorry, this is like my first conference talk, so I'm a little nervous. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, that helps. That helps. Okay. So RegSuit is actually like a really powerful and impressive tool, and it comes with a bunch of plugins that make it really smart. Um, so for example, you don't have to commit any of these screenshots or the HTML reports to your, to your repo. Um, there's, instead, you can install a plugin for, for RegSuit that will take all these things and publish them to S3. And there's actually another um, plugin that will p uh, comment on your PR with a link to that report. Um, so it's, it's really cool. It's a really cool tool. So, um, so we, we put these all together and we use them for the CSS conversion process. Um, and one thing worth noting is that while it did catch a lot of bugs and a lot of mistakes that I made during the process, um, probably the biggest benefit of using it was uh, the peace of mind that I had during the whole process. I could like experiment and move fast and break things, so to speak, um, and know that I had the safety net in place that would catch anything that I missed. Okay. I have 17 seconds left. All right, so I'm going to use this time just to leave this URL up on the screen, bit.ly slash screenshot testing. Um, this will take you to my tweet, which links to my blog posts on the subject, 
If you, don't, if you didn't notice, that's my way of secretly getting you to follow me on Twitter. Um, and yeah, feel free to um, tweet at me with any questions or thoughts or anything. Or if you've taken any photos of me during this talk, send them to me because I want to show them to my parents and make them think I'm important. So, all right, thanks.